morning, welcome to the Israel First television program live again. Uh, third time we've been live on YouTube bringing you news from the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're here in the studio. I'm Martin Blackham. I'm with my wife Natalie Blackham. Hi. It's great to have you with us. If you are uh, watching live, by the way, of Facebook, uh, sorry, by the way, of YouTube, then please. Uh, do uh, contact us. We'd love to hear from you. If you are able to um, send a comment or a remark, that would be great. And uh, if you can let us know that you are watching, then we will uh, put your comment on air as well. And as we come into the studio, um, those of you who have been watching the news from Israel, and of course this affects everybody around the world, Natalie, there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in the situation is the uh, situation with COVID-19 uh, and uh, the in Israel. As we speak, there's a total lockdown to begin this evening, even as we've come into the studio. Uh, the country is once more in a complete lockdown as over 8,000 new virus cases have been reported for a second day in, the in a row. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says we are in a state of emergency. We're, we're in the midst of a global pandemic and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said in a meeting it's reached Israel and is claiming many lives, the, the different strains. This is the one from the UK at the moment that's been affecting uh, Israel. He said the country needs to impose a full lockdown immediately and that every hour that we delay the disease spreads even quicker and is exacting a heavy price. The country is once more uh, locking down amid a surge of the novel coronavirus, uh, coronavirus cases. The government approved a lockdown on Tuesday just this week. And it, as I say, as it, I've just mentioned, it's going to start this evening. It's closing the entire education system except special education. The lockdown uh, likely means that all schools will be shut except for uh, special education restrictions already in place will likewise continue, including that no one will be able to travel more than a thousand meters from their home. There will be no retail open and restaurants will be uh, limited to delivery only. People will not be allowed to congregate in each other's homes. Travel abroad will only be allowed for essential purposes and people who have purchased tickets uh, before the lockdown will still be able to get out of the country, but no new tickets will be honored. And the situation uh, the statistics are that 59,229 patients are battling the disease in Israel with 824 in serious condition. 207 people are connected to ventilators and the official death toll since the start of the pandem um, pandemic. So it's just a, a, a very serious situation, Natalie, mm -hmm. you know, that we're in and, um, and we want to keep you informed and updated. I know that many of you are facing this all over the world but many people have also asked how the situation is in, is in Israel. Obviously that means that travel has stopped and that uh, we can't have any tourists still at the moment but we'll keep you informed and let you know how the situation goes Natalie won't mm -hmm. we? And uh, also in the, the news just in today uh, Israel targets Syria. Syria uh, has been having uh, Hezbollah involved, which is a terror group, and using Syria as a base. And it says Israel targets Syria with airstrikes, according to reports. Missiles aimed at the Iranian Revolutionary Guard bases. Syrian army says projectiles flying from over the Golan struck several sites in Syria, according to reports. Israel struck targets in southern Syria. The third such attack in 10 days, Syrian state television reported as military defectors in the country said that missiles targeted Iranian Revolutionary Guard bases. A military spokesman uh, from Syria said missiles flying over the Golan targeted several locations. Live coverage, it was live on television in Syria, showed a multi-story building on fire. There was no immediate comment from the Israeli military spokesman on the reported Syria strike. The bases in eastern, central and southern Syria, which Israel has hit hard in Recent months are believed to have a strong presence of Iranian-backed militias. That's to it. Intelligence sources. That's it. This is the problem. Is like Israel really have to look at what's happening in Syria because you know that Iran is coming into Syria to be able to um, 
be closer to Israel and attack Israel. So they have to have an eye all the time, all the time on uh, what's happening over there. And uh, so you need to sit tight right now. Right. And, um, you know, it's, it's a very serious situation. And Israel has stepped up the strikes in recent days on Syria, recent months, as part of a shadow war approved by the United States and part of the anti-Iran policy that has undermined in the last two years <clears throat> the situation in Syria. Uh, Israel defense officials have said in recent months that Israel would step up its campaign against Iran in Syria, where with the help of its proxy militias, Tehran has expanded its presence. And it's not just that uh, Syria is the problem, but Iran is the problem because it's using um, Syria as a base. It's just uh, across the border in the north of Israel mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to launch possible attacks against Israel. So it's very and make incursions into Israel. So it's a very serious situation. And uh, as we come into this new year, 2011, it's 2000 and 2000 and what is it? 21 <laughs> of 2011. Suddenly you are giving us 10 years. And, uh, <laughs> we just feel like it's 2011. <laughs> And uh, it's very important for you to know, you know, what's happening with the borders uh, of Israel. Yeah. And uh, we've also got some exciting news that there's been uh, the first Jewish immigrants of 2021, not 2011, Natalie, <laughs> uh, have arrived in Israel. Government uh, Minister Panina Tamona Shata welcomed 300 new Olim from Ethiopia. Olim are those uh, Jewish people are making Aliyah. Uh, to the land of Israel uh, from Ethiopia as part of Operation Zur Israel. Immigration and Absorption Minister uh, Tamano Shato greeted hundreds of new immigrants arriving in, in Israel at the uh, Ben Gurion airport. The first. So we have, that's it, but we have to say she's Ethiopian herself. Right. So it's amazing that now it's an Ethiopian who is the minister and who is welcoming you know, people from Ethiopia. So it's really quite amazing, really. It's a, it's a big thing that um, the Ethiopians are coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there's a whole story. And if you want to know more about the Ethiopian Aliyah and about the exciting work that's been done, uh, we've also done an uh, interview uh, in the past. And so you can look at that on YouTube. With the ex more, um, uh, ex Mossad. Mossad, Mossad. Yeah, Man, and yeah. you can have a look at that on the that's on the uh, YouTube that's below. It. And and it's amazing because you think it was they had the Ethiopian had to flee into Sudan and they were in camp over there. And now there is things I heard this morning. I don't know if you if you saw the news uh, for that because you are scanning a lot of news. But now Sudan is also coming into the Abraham Accords. Yes, that's a story I've got. Uh, wonderful. At some wonderful. stage, wonderful. Uh, if we're with time permitting. And uh, we hope to cover that. It's exciting. That. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of uh, good things are happening, and um, uh, for Israel at the moment, you know, even though we are in lock, coming into lockdown. Well, uh, one of the strange things is that, um, or sad things, is that terror attacks continue to at, uh, happen in Israel. Uh, there was a terror attack near Halamish. Uh, an Israeli woman, Rivka Taito, was seriously injured driving her car on road. 465 after being hit by in the head by rocks thrown by Palestinian terrorists. She, she was rushed to Shiva Medical Center in Ta, uh, Tel Hashomer for urgent medical treatment. She has a significant head injury, Dr. Yoram Kain of Shiva Medical Center said. And uh, the victim's family said that the children who were in the car were fortunately not physically harmed. The IDF undertook a search for the attackers. I understand that. Um, since we've come, um, come into the studio, they've uh, found various people who they believe were involved in the attack and apprehended a number of suspects. According to the Israeli army, there were 1,500 stone-throwing incidents by Palestinian terrorists towards Israeli vehicles in 2020. That's probably even more than that. That's just the ones that are recorded, recorded by, yes, yes. by the military uh, that are occurring. So. And we say, we, we always say, stones can kill, okay? Because sometimes people think, oh, it's just only a stone. No, stone really can kill and have killed already. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, the, 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 we've even done an interview in the past where 
we interviewed um, somebody, uh, uh, the father of a terror victim mm-hmm. who was killed. And you know, I remember this reminds me a story. One day I was with a friend and we're going from the north to back into the south of, uh, in like at home, close to Jerusalem. And we took the road 60 and we were close to Jenin. And uh, uh, the road 16 is the one who is going into Samaria on the top. And uh, there were some children who were coming out of a school and they make like funny uh, gesture to make us be afraid. And I move my car. So you can see how quickly when, when you see danger, uh, you 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 are doing you are moving with your car so you can imagine when you when you feel stones coming onto you obviously you are going to do thing with your car so is you know is very dangerous it's yeah even even despite all that's happening with covid nineteen and and terror and um, the lockdown and everything we still need to be very careful and the security is. Uh, very careful because you know this can happen at any time in any place and mm-hmm. it's something whilst uh, uh, fortunately it doesn't happen a lot uh, that does happen from time to time now mm-hmm. one of the things that the dangers can be when you're outside a community and that's exactly what happened in the next story an Israeli mother of six was murdered in a terror attack in Samaria 52 year old Esther Hergen was found dead with signs of violence on her body in the Shaked Forest, northern Samaria. And what she'd done, she'd just gone out jogging from her community uh, into the forest. Esther Hergen was a resident of Tel Menashe, a town near the forest. She was found on the side of the uh, uh, path. Her body was marked by signs of violence, including uh, to her head. Her family yes, it was terrible. Missing on uh, to Mag- and uh, Magen David Adam which is the National Ambulance Service in Israel. And you can see an interview we've done, we've done with them as well, below on YouTube, uh, pr- unfortunately and sadly pronounced her dead at the scene. Uh, IDF soldiers were immediately called uh, to the incident. She leaves behind her husband, Benjamin, and six children. Her youngest child just celebrated his bar mitzvah three months ago. Uh, the Samaria Re- Regional Council referred to the incident as a terrorist attack, adding that Hergen was found overnight with her head crushed. A dear woman, so full of kindness, is murdered by vile people in such a cruel way, said head of Samaria Regional Council, Yossi Dagan. And, and she was coming from uh, France. She met Alia from France. And she was an artist. She was an amazing lady. I was reading about her. And it's, it's just very terrible. She was just in the evening going to jog. Um, and she never came back. Yeah, very, very sad. And uh, as I say, you've got to be very careful and um, be astute. Uh, and this when, is when in you... Samaria. So it's always the place, you know, that <laughs> there is really people, settlers, like Jewish people who take the time to really settle in the mountain of Israel because they know that is important. And uh, obviously they are closer to Arab uh, villages and there are some that are okay with them and some are really uh, fighting and are violent and if you've just joined us you, uh, we're on youtube live if you're watching at a later date you can always email us at info at israelfirst.org if you're watching live then please do come in and we will on air be able to uh, your comments well natalie you've come in and you usually have things to tell yes, us I and d- share with us I do. don't forget she's got her book as well uh, the beauty of the hebrew language which you can get on our website well, uh, we've been having in Israel, by the way. Oh, sorry, sorry. I touched been... something and we shouldn't be on. <laughs> this is live. This is live. Um, yes, I wanted to speak to you a bit again because of the thing that's happening and we are praying and we say like Hebrew is so important and Hebrew is so uh, exciting and it gives us a lot of insight of what's happening in the world when you read the when you read uh, the Bible, okay, the Word of God. And I wanted to tell you today about one letter um, because, okay, so I'm sure that many of you already know there is 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, okay? And, um, oh, maybe I can show you first. There is in a, you know, it's funny because, Matt, I'm, I'm studying more Hebrew right now, so you know, we read this way 
in English or in a lot of languages, but in Hebrew is that way. So now I'm reading my book, I'm opening my book like a Hebrew book. <laughs> this is very funny. Now this is one of the picture um, of the of the Aleph Bet, okay? And today I wanted to speak to you about the one who is in the middle and is Lamed. It's like Le, Lamed, and uh, Lamed so is the name of the letter. And also Lamed, it has also a number, which is 30. And it's interesting because, you know, for the Jewish people, they say when you are 30, you arrive at a certain maturity, you've learned certain things, and you can really start to teach people. And Lamed is also Lil Mod, which is to learn and also to teach. So the two things are together. When you start to learn things, you can start to teach it. When, sorry, when you are learning yourself, you can teach it after to the people. So this is beautiful. And is the tallest letter in the Aleph bed, and is to show how it, you know to, it's so important to learn and to study. So um, this week I was thinking about. Uh, I know a, a prayer which is Mode Ani. I don't know if you know this one. It's the one that uh, the people, uh, the Jewish people, pray in the morning to say, Thank you, Lord, you give me my life again. Okay? And it's just a beautiful prayer to say, Thank you that I'm alive. And, um, and I was learning how to say it. And after I was thinking, so it's like kind of a traditional uh, prayer for them. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I want to say the Our Father in Hebrew. And you know what? Very difficult to find it in a written because, you know, the New Testament was written in, uh, in Greek. So it's hard to find something in Hebrew, but we have some good friends who wrote a book which is called Our, Pre Our Father in Hebrew. No. I can't remember the name now. Um, this was Nehemiah Nere Gordon and uh, Johnson, uh, his friend, and they've done a book about our prayers. I'm sure if you do some research, it will come onto your research uh, when, you, when you Google it, because um, I find it again this morning. But I wanted to tell you uh, that I'm learning a lot of things with the Hebrew mind. And we need to enrich our life with these things because it's very important. Okay, so when you see, you know, very often as Christian, we are living this life, which is not always easy, especially right now. And we say, oh, hopefully, you know, in heaven, it will be okay. But when you read our father prayer, what does he say? He doesn't say anything about Oh, when you are in heaven, it will be. No, he said that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you know the name, um, and I will look. So, okay, I said it for you in Ivry. It is Avinus, is our father. Sheba Shamaim, which is in heaven. It Kadesh Shemcha, may your name be sanctified. Okay, which is very interesting because this reminds me the um, uh, the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. which is at the beginning is that we recognize that God is God, that He is our God, and that that His name would be sanctified. And it's the same at the beginning of our prayer of our Father. So I was like, wow, this is am amazing. And there is like, Tavu, um, Tavu Malchutera, so that your kingdom will come. Okay, and then, uh, oh, I was looking, interesting enough, again in the book of Nehemiah, Gordon, Isaac is written, define um, gospel, Matthew, the, mm -hmm. the gospel of Matthew in Hebrew, a very old manuscript in Hebrew. So it's written a tiny bit different. By the way, if you want to receive our update, just uh, go on to our website and you can receive our weekly update, which is important because we give some news and we put a bit also of teaching. And uh, I'm doing that this week about, and, about and that. If you, if you want to receive uh, daily news from Israel, then you can get that on our website. You can mm -hmm. also go to our new parlor account. Uh, there's a link on the news part of our website 
uh, how to go to register for a parlor account and you can get the news every day uh, from Israel. We uh, do the daily news. Me Martin is doing a very good job for that. And uh, yes, in the midst of all of that, you know that my Facebook account have been hacked and uh, I think I'm stopping it. There is a lot of things going on, so I just stop it. But you go on our website and there is a lot of things on our website. Anyway, I just want to finish and uh, to say, so you see, uh, Retson, Retson is uh, his will, but it's also his desire. So the, the thing in our prayer is like the desire of God, that everything who is wonderful in Shamaim, in heaven, will be done on earth. So our work is here on earth and that God wants to come back here on earth to be with us. So sometimes we are thinking, oh, wait, you know, we will be in heaven and everything will be okay. No, God is, his desire is, his main desire is to come to be with us here. So when Yeshua came here, he showed us the first step and he said, now carry on. And now we need to bring back here on earth how it is in heaven. So if you've just joined us, we're doing a live uh, YouTube uh, program and um, you can contact us live and we'd love to hear from you. If you're watching uh, uh, later date, then you can still contact us. You can do that at info at israelfirst.org. And remember, it's because of your support that we're able to do this program. Uh, you can go to the website and there's a donate page. Well, one of the things is that's happening, Natalie, in the world is that technology, as everybody knows, is changing so fast. And one of the amazing things is an Israeli company has pioneered payment by facial recognition technology, pre-CI8, uh, pre a Holon-based Starts startup aims to make the entire shopping process as simple as just looking into a screen. And I started uh, rolling out this technology at the Azrilie Business Center in central Israel. Imagine this, you walk up to your favorite cafe and a kiosk outside the door recognizes you by face and asks if you want to make your usual order. After you make your order, your account is charged automatically without you pulling out your wallet or phone to make a payment. That's the idea behind the pre -CAs. And uh, the whole, it's making the whole shopping um, process as simple as, as looking into the screen. And uh, they've already, uh, as I say, they've started rolling out this technology in various uh, restaurants in the center. Uh, where they have their own offices now. Now, can I play the devil a bit in what's what's happening? It's like, this is good if people are good. But if people are bad, mm -hmm. it can be really tricky. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole thing about facial t uh, recognition technology is, is um, you know, has uh, various things it can be used for, for bad purposes. So, you know, it I know. Is, so, it I mean, necessarily exactly. I mean, when, when thing. you but speak about, yeah, yeah. But when you speak about like, exactly about like, that we want from Shamahin, from the heaven that comes here, which mm. is only good thing right now in, on earth, there is good and bad. And so, and technology can be used for bad purposes. That's so it, that, yeah. That the, problem, the problem with the technology gains is that we always have the issue that technology can be used for evil purposes as well. And uh, certainly this is a technology that could, that could be used for wrong purposes. Like vaccines. And we need to be, exactly. And we need, to be, we need to be very careful, you know, with everything that's happening in the world. Well, one of the amazing you know we're talking about technology in israel and israel is doing amazing things throughout the world remember israel is meant to be a light to the nations well israeli scientists are turning the tide against toxic water bacteria israel's blue green technologies is battling the cyanobacteria that contaminates half the world's fresh water lakes the Israeli company has developed a new weapon to fight the spread of the killer bacteria that threatens to turn lakes and oceans toxic. Authorities in Florida called in blue-green technologies after two, lake, two large lakes showed signs of infestation by algal blooms that grow from cyanobacteria and have contaminated bodies of water across the globe. The company has 
successfully treated similar outbreaks as far away as China, Russia and South Africa. We pride ourselves, said the company's chief technology officer, Moshi Harrell, in taking care of the world's most precious resorter, uh, precious resource water. Okay, may I ask you something? Did you put this news on the on our website? Not yet, no. Oh, but you are going to? I uh, hope so. Okay, yeah. Do you see, it's very important now that we don't have Facebook. We are putting news every day on our website. So if you want really to know what's happening, and like we we really look at the news and we want to bring like honest reporting okay so it's very important please go on our website uh, which is israelfirst.org and you will find some news and honest news and um, you know that one of the things that's happening in israel we've talked about this uh, in the last program is about the elections and whether israel is going to go to an election whether israel is not going to go to an election well, Israel is going to go to uh, elections. The country is to have its fourth election in less than two years. Uh, the 23rd Knesset officially dispersed just before Christmas, sending Israelis to the polls for the fourth time in less than two years. Elections were automatically called for 90 days from now, and it's going to be on the 23rd of March 2021. Benjamin Netanyahu, who is 71, uh, amazingly, uh, doesn't seem so old, uh, has held power uninterrupted since 2009. He's also served as Prime Minister from 1996 to 1999, making him Israel's longest serving leader. He remains in office as head of the transitional government until elections are held and a new coalition is formed. In both cha Israel's Channel 12 news and camp polls, Netanyahu's Likud party was forecast to be the largest faction in the new uh, Knesset with 29 or 28 seats. So we'll keep you updated as mm -hmm. to um, the elections. And, and there uh, is a lot now because of the uh, the election coming. There is a lot of new parties, isn't it? Was starting springing up like everywhere. Um, Israel is very special for that. You can start some party quite easily, I would find, compared to uh, other other countries. And uh, you need to have at least six seats and then you can be in the election. Well, as we come to the end of the program, you know, we wanted to talk about Sudan and the peace. Sudan's just made a peace treaty with, with Israel, which is absolutely amazing. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with us, don't forget you can email us at info at israelfirst.org.